what it do, what it do, what it does, what it does. Welcome back to Ross React. So look, um, part two. Let's get straight into it. When she heard her sentence, her apology and crying intensified. I don't know how much time passes. I'm going to live with that. My heart Permanently banned. However, the same cannot be said. All right. This is where we left off at the last time. Let's get straight into it. Then for Adrian Dunn. This is Adrian Dunn, who is facing charges for murder in San Antonio. Adrian, an ex-convict, was sentenced for the murder of Rakeem Tariq Charles. Police said that Adrian shot Charles in the back during a drug deal in a parking lot on July 16th, 2012. Damn. To make matters worse, this wasn't even Dunn's first encounter with law enforcement. Into prison twice for possessing a firearm after this murder. He committed another shooting a month before this murder. And he's shown zero remorse. Hey, this guy's a menace. Adrian Dunn? This guy's a menace. Hold on. Wish he said that he... We're going to just replay Firearm it. after this murder. He committed another shooting a month before this murder. Yeah, so my man's a shooter. He's a shooter. He known to slang that iron. And he's shown zero remorse. Prosecutors urged the jury to impose the maximum sentence noting that Adrian had an extensive criminal history and had shown no remorse for the murder. Prosecutor Jason Goss can be seen here holding the hand of the victim's parents. Before arguing to the jury that a life sentence was necessary to prevent another family from suffering as Charles' family had. Her son who has to suffer and this family who has to suffer because of the defendant. And that's why, that's why we're asking you for a life sentence. If you thought the crimes were horrendous, Wait till you see how Adrian reacted to his sentence. Throughout the trial, Adrian showed no remorse and couldn't have been less concerned. He was found guilty of the crime. Still, his attorney argued that a sentence of 35 to 40 years would be more appropriate. His reasoning? I'll give Adrian a chance to go into prison and try to make something of himself so that when he gets out, if he ever gets out, he can try to be an asset to our community. Hey, a dude like that cannot be an asset to the community. First off, how you in court wearing a Nike jogging suit, bro? That is not what you do. Then he over here picking his beard and all that, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. I hate to, I hate to be, first off, me personally, I hate to see anybody in jail. I hate to put anybody in jail, but some people just need to go. And somebody like that, that just be having guns, be shooting folks, commit before the murder he shot somebody else it's just like bro you don't need to be out here and that's as simple as that you don't need to be out here because you're gonna just be out here terrorizing people now like i said i don't like to send people to jail because that's kind of weak as hell but a guy like this needs to go however the jury deliberated for just two hours before returning with a sentence of life in prison as the jury this man is only 21 sentence of he only 21? This boy looked crazy as hell. His decision was read out. Adrian began to fight with Bexar County Sheriff's deputies, attempting to escort him from the courtroom. Dunn's behavior was marked by profanity and outbursts. He was eventually subdued and removed from the court. Adrian's case can be termed a drug case gone bad. However, while he remains stoic and combative, there are other convicts who break down in court and feel genuine remorse for their actions. Like in the case of Ellis Nelson Ortiz Nieves. Oh, okay. This is Ellis Nelson Ortiz Nieves. The bruises, some of the bruises were in the shape of a belt buckle. Man, I ain't gonna let you say I ain't gonna let you sit here and say no, no crazy shit, shit about me, man. No, oh, man, because he's a, he, he's saying shit he don't even know, man. He was facing charges for the murder of an infant in Michigan. The cause of death What the hell is up with these boys in Michigan going crazy? Damn, Michigan? Come on, bro! Physical abuse, which was later ruled as murder. The four-year-old boy, Giovanni Mejias, was the son of Ortiz Nieves' girlfriend, Sonia Hernandez. Sonia claimed she had no involvement in the crime. However, her neighbor had a different side of the story. Sonia was well aware. She was well, well aware of what was happening because she told him that was his responsibility to whoop them. Ortiz Nieves denied abusing the boy, but the judge and prosecutors believe his beating the child resulted in his death. Kent County deputies reported that when they arrived at the Gaines Township trailer, where Ortiz Nieves was left to care for several children under 11, it was here that they found Giovanni left on the kitchen floor. 
An autopsy showed that Giovanni died from internal bleeding caused by an abdominal tear, wow. which would have been caused by an adult, not a child. During the trial, Kent County Circuit Court Judge Mark Trusock can be heard condemning Ortiz Nieves' actions, reprimanding him in very strong words, and insisting that he should never be allowed out of prison. You are the lowest form of human life that I've been able to observe or see. That you committed this murder and that you beat this little boy to death. The judge described the injuries suffered by Giovanni before his death, causing Ortiz Nieves to become upset and struggle with deputies, who had to remove him from the courtroom. You had put cigarettes out on this poor little child. Send his ass to jail for life, bro. Put his cigarettes out on this boy? And the mama is, send the mama to jail too for letting this shit happen. That ain't right, bro. That ain't right. I don't play with little kids. I don't play with old folks, man. You taking advantage of a little four-year-old, you gonna kick his ass like that? Then you gonna put a cigarette out on his boy body? Nah, bro, this ain't acceptable. There was evidence of that from the pictures. Anybody says anything back there right <laughs> Ortiz Nieves was sentenced to life in prison and Get him out parole of here. and was given a sentence of 80 to 150 years for first-degree child abuse. Ortiz Nieves' reaction might suggest that he is guilty. However, this wasn't the only time a convict reacted emotionally to their sentence. There is the case of Jordan Fuss. This Negro lying. He ain't even a Negro. This man is lying and these tears is fake. These some fake tears, boy. Is that, I'm trying to see if it's wet on his eye, boy, man, it's fake. This is Jordan Fuss. I'm oh, sorry. Nah. I wish it was me. He did not deserve it, I did. Facing charges for manslaughter in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The 22-year-old was found guilty of DUI manslaughter in a 2014 crash that claimed the life of six-year-old Santiago Geraldo. Damn. Fuss, shaking uncontrollably as he entered the courtroom with his family, had a blood alcohol level of 0.21% which is more than twice the legal limit. He was traveling over 90 miles per hour on Sterling Road when he crashed Woo! his 2004 Infiniti G35 into another vehicle at Davie Road just before midnight on October 3rd, 2014. Prosecutors had sought the maximum sentence for the crime. Fuss attorney argued for a reduced sentence, stating that his client had been so remorseful that he had contemplated suicide. However, prosecutors stated that Fuss had admitted to using alcohol and smoking marijuana since the crash. The Geraldo family cried in court while the defense argued for a lighter sentence. Santiago's father took the stand and had this to say while staring directly into Jordan's eyes. Hi. May God forgive you, because I can't. He didn't just take my son's life, he took mine too. <laughs> During the trial, Fuss can be seen apologizing to the victim's family in tears. I'm sorry. I wish it was me. He did not deserve it. I did. He also expressed his love for his family members and girlfriend, whom he met online after the crash. Not then came crash. the verdict as Jordan was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Court imposes the lowest permissible prison sentence allowable by Florida's criminal punishment code, 14.625 years. He continued crying as he learned his fate. Love you guys. Fuss might have learned his lesson. However, some crimes require more than being remorseful, like in the case of Antonio Barbo, a 13-year-old who murdered his own grandmother for money to buy pizza and pot. This is it. <coughs> Hold up! <coughs> Boy, what? Pizza and weed, you gonna smoke your grandmama? What is up with these folks, man? Antonio Barbo, who is facing charges for murder in Wisconsin. 14 years old, Barbo was in court for the murder of his 78-year-old great-grandmother, Barbara Olson. Wow. Rather than trying to explain what this 14-year-old monster did, let's hear it directly from the mouth of the killer. I tried to uh, scare her to get money and then use force if needed. Um, an attack, uh, 
I guess, to kill. The boys hid weapons in their pants before catching a ride to be dropped off at Antonio's grandma's house. What happened when the boys got inside is shocking. Oh, it's too late. I was on the run and she said she was gonna call my mom. He nodded and then I took the first swing. Okay, and when you say that you took the first swing, is with the hand axe? Yes, sir. Antonio also said that he tried to put his great-grandmother's body in a car trunk, but when he couldn't, he left it in the garage and covered it with a blanket. Judy, Barbara's granddaughter, was the person who discovered the body. Wow. She quickly ran to a neighbor's house to call the police. Uh, please send an ambulance to the police. My mother is laying in the garage and there's a lot of blood and there's a blanket over her head. There's how a lot did of the, blood. How did, the towel, how did the blanket get over her? I have no idea. And how old is your mother? She is um, 78. And is she breathing? I don't know. I can't look. The blanket is over her head and I can't look. Okay, can, who's there with you? Oh, God, the neighbor. Okay, can the neighbor check if she's breathing? Oh, you don't I'm have to go and look. You don't have to go. If your you neighbor can to. just go and check if she's breathing. Okay, he would like you to check. Are you sending somebody? I'm working on it. I need to know if she's breathing. While Judy and her neighbor are left frantic to call for help and try and save Barbara, Antonio and his accomplice used the $155 to get high and enjoy some pizza. During the trial, Ray. you can see Barbo reading a statement, apologizing for the killing and asking for forgiveness. Barbo said he regretted his actions. Regardless of his apologies, Barbo was sentenced to life imprisonment as he continued crying. Yeah, bro, you gotta get up out of here, bro. You gotta get up out of here. If you'll kill your own blood, for $150 and you just use that to get some pizza and some weed, boy, you need your ass beat. However shocking you think Barbo's case was, LaShirley Morris's case gives it a run for its money. Not LaShirley. This is LaShirley Morris, oh, who is Lord. facing charges for murder in Atlanta. Oh yeah, look at that neck tat. Any chick that got a neck tat, they bout that like facts. LaShirley is accused of killing three-year-old Kwan Mason. The cause of death was physical abuse with a baseball bat, which was later ruled as a homicide. The incident occurred October 21st, 2017, when Morris beat the boy as punishment. But what punishment could be so severe that a child is beaten to death? Right. Well, listen here. And then a violent death for taking a cupcake from the kitchen. A child who was inside the home. Not for taking a cupcake. A child's supposed to try to take a cupcake and some cookies, man. Man, I'm not going to lie. 90% of these people deserve to be in jail. I can't even think of why it's 90%. It's just I don't like people being in jail. But most of these F words need to be in jail because they committing crimes just for no reason. It's not for them to come up. Y'all hurting kids. Y'all hurting grandmas. Y'all just shooting folks. It ain't making no sense witnessed the attack and reported the events to the police. He's not awake, he's not alert. No, he's not alert. He was breathing at first. Now he's not breathing. Morris's sister, Glendria Morris, was also charged in the child's... Boy, they look exactly alike. They look exactly alike. Both of these hoes need to go down. Both of these hoes need to go to jail. Crazy as hell. They just need to obliterate that whole little bloodline because if you, if you and your sister on this type of time... Imagine, imagine they mama. Yeah, they just need to wipe this whole family just off the earth. Death because she did not intervene during the incident. The victim, Kwan Mason, lived with Glendria Morris, who was also his legal guardian at the time of the alleged killing. Kwan and three of his siblings entered the Division of Family and Child Services care after their mother was arrested on a reckless conduct charge in March 2017. Wow. According to DFCS records, Mason allegedly left her children home alone, had anger issues, and abused the children. Geraldine Mason, the victim's mother, was released in April 2017 and reunited with one of her children, but requested temporary guardianship for Kwan and his twin brother, according to DFCS records. In court, the 911 call LaShirley made showed that the baby was already dead before first responders arrived. Wow. LaShirley Morris was found guilty of murder, aggravated assault, and cruelty to children charges and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after pleading guilty to murder. LaShirley's actions were horrible. However, Hoskins' reaction seemed to top it. <clears throat> this is Jaleel Hoskins 
who is facing charges for murder in Michigan for the murder. Bro, what the f word? What is up? Bro, it gotta be something in our water, bro. It gotta be something in our water, bro. Bro, how many? What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Out of twelve people, a good five, six of them been from Michigan, bro. What the hell is going on here? What? I thought Florida was the crazy state. People from Michigan is really nothing the hell up. Of his girlfriend, Latrice Mays. Mays, a mother of five, disappeared in March of 2013. Her sudden and mysterious absence led to her family wanting answers and ultimately a nationwide search. Initially, Hoskins denied being involved with the murder whatsoever. I have nothing to do with the murder. I have, I have nothing to do with the disappearance. However, Hoskins quickly changed his plea when he heard the testimonials and evidence being argued against him. First, Hoskins' own cousin took the stand. After, after the domestic or whatever happened, uh, I guess I guess she after they left, she she said she was going to tell the police that he stabbed her uh, while doing it. Doing what? Killing. I guess he choked her or something. Did he say he choked her? Yes. Then one of Hoskins' close friends took the stand. Bro, first off, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I don't like snitches. I don't like snitches. But my man says, what? I mean, with your own family members, bro, your family members are just supposed to be quiet. Man, I don't know. This, this is a real sticky situation, man. He said, I did her. I need her. I need some help. She, I can't carry her by myself. Lastly, on the same day of the murder, Police dash cam footage showed them responding to a call Latrice had made in which she claimed Hoskins was abusing her. After hearing the piles of evidence against him, Hoskins was forced to change his plea. Hoskins pleaded guilty to the murder of Latrice Mays and also admitted to tampering with the evidence. Hoskins, a habitual criminal offender, decided to take Mays' life because he was afraid she would report his assault on the father of two of her children to the police. Hoskins was initially charged with open murder, which carries a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Mays was afraid she would not regain custody of two of her children if she did not cooperate with law enforcement in the assault against the children's father. Hoskins was given a maximum life sentence in prison as a repeat offender. He attacked the podium before being restrained by police. Hoskins' reaction was crazy. However, nothing could prepare you for the reaction of Ricky Hand. God this damn Rick. is Ricky Hand. A Springfield man possibly facing new charges tonight after he throws urine and feces on his attorney in court. Did you just give me 40 years? He was facing charges for multiple robberies in Ohio. Ricky had been on a robbing spree, hitting numerous local convenience stores late at night and running off with some extra cash. However, this crime spree would soon come to an end the night he decided to try his luck with John's drive through In the footage here, we can find the owner of the shop beginning to close down for the night. Little did this small business owner know, there was an armed Ricky hand lurking the building. As Ricky began to make his way to the door, he's greeted by the owner who is armed and begins firing to scare Ricky off. After this failed robbery attempt, the shop owner called the police to inform them that there had just been a robbery attempt that resulted in a man getting shot. Damn, he popped. Yeah, this is John's drive through West Main Street. A uh, guy just tried to rob me and I shot him. He ran out the back door. Okay, is he injured? I, I think I hit him. It would only take a couple of days for Ricky to admit himself to a hospital in order to treat the bullet wounds he left John's drive through with that night. Damn. It was here police arrested and questioned him about that night. I did try to rob John's drive through. He got shot three times. Got I shot three times. <clears throat> when the case took to the courtroom, Hand was sentenced to 40 years. The reason the judge gave Ricky such a long sentence is because they were also able to prove he was guilty for carrying out a string of robberies across Springfield, Ohio. Hand lost it when he heard that he would spend decades in jail. Hand reached for bottles of his own excrement and urine, which were hidden in an arm sling, and threw it at his lawyer in court. How? Oh, oh, man. Hold on. So you didn't, you didn't had some pee tucked off in your arm sleeve. Ain't nobody checked that. Yeah, if I was a lawyer, I had to kick his ass. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. You ain't gonna just sling no pee on me, bro. Ain't no way in hell. 
You can see Hand reach for the bottles of filth. As a result of the courtroom incident, Hand was charged with an additional five counts of harassment with bodily substances, one for his attorney and four for the deputies present. He's also charged with obstructing official business and retaliation. If you thought these reactions were shocking, you'd be amazed at this video of dangerous killers who wanted the death penalty. That's crazy. We gonna have to get into that for sure. Bro, I don't know what the hell is going on with these people in this world nowadays, man, but um, the world is crazy. These people are doing stuff to kids, their grandmas, random people, hitting kids with cars, being too drunk. I mean, it's just not making no type of sense. So, people, this is what I'm going to say to you. Be safe. Be careful. Stay blessed up. And like, subscribe, and drop a comment for this video, man. Till next time, y'all. Peace.